In this video, I'm going to be discussing transracialism from a subjective point of view and pointing out a few ways on how it could benefit American society. If you want to find out, watch to the end. And remember, everything's debatable. Here we go. Now, outside of the fact that by definition, this is sheer appropriation, this ideology could be used to break down some of the social stigmas and stereotypes that exist today. The first one, there are numerous studies that have been done over the years that suggest that individuals with African-American sounding names are less likely to get a callback when applying for employment. If you can simply change your name and identify as whatever race that you think is more likely to get the job, then by all means, do it your hiring probability is gonna be that much higher. Not to mention the element of surprise when you show up, not being the person they expect you to be, gonna be that much higher. I'm a 35 year old white man. Harrison, born Antoine Smalls, has transracial identity, identifying as Harrison Booth, a 35 year old white man from Colorado. Impact number two, the adoption of transracialism as a society could directly attack the ideology of systemic racism or the concept of systemic racism. I would be remiss if I didn't mention the fact that not only is it considered appropriation, it also places an emphasis on societal stereotypes. So how do you embrace your identity? I dress a certain way, Patagonia. I wear a thick brown leather belt. I like to envision myself after the surgery. <clears throat> hey, excuse me, what IPA do you have on tap? Hey, did you see Game of Thrones last night? Yeah. Impact number three, if we were more accepting of transracialism, this would encourage individuals to educate themselves on different cultures, religions, or different traditions that exist. Keep in mind, stereotypes are formed from ignorance. By educating yourself about different groups, different cultures, different traditions, religions, you can stand clear of said ignorance. I just miss Colorado sometimes, you know? Here I pretend the buildings are the old San Juan mountain range, but you know, the job's just here. And where do you work? I'm a systems engineer for Coca-Cola. Oh, okay. That boy don't work. He go to school and that's it. Mm -hmm. One day he said, call me Harrison. I said, who's that? He said, me. Do you believe that he is a white man? I mean, he isn't. Mm -hmm. Shit, I'd love to wake up one day and say, hey, everybody, I'm Rihanna. But I ain't. The world today as we see it would be completely different if we got rid of the social construct of race. Just a little bit of history on the term transracial. Historically, this has been used when speaking of adoption. A child born a certain race was adopted by parents of a different race and grew up how that couple see fit. Nowadays, this term transracialism, as I see it, typically is displayed by an individual who has adoration for a specific culture or a specific group, and then in turn begin to appropriate or identify as a member of that group. I mean, this idea could completely abolish the thought of race. I don't think they get it because they don't realize that race is just a made up thing. Mm -hmm. They grew up having labels and me, I'm, I'm just not like that. I see. If we weren't so tied to the idea of race, being that it's a social construct, it would make news like this less important. This is kind of unreal. A college professor in DC has revealed she's been pretending to be black her entire career. Jessica Krug, she's an associate professor at George Washington University and has written extensively about Africa and Latin America, all while claiming her own black and Latina heritage. But in an article published on medium.com yesterday, she apologized. She revealed she's white and Jewish. She grew up in a Kansas City suburb. Her story is not unlike uh, Rachel Dolezal. Remember her? She's another white woman who claimed that she was black while teaching studies, Africana studies, at Eastern Washington University. She even was the head of her local NAACP chapter. One of Jessica Krug's students said that she used a lot of Spanish in her speech, always changed the exact place she said she was from, even said the N-word when it was in texts that the class was reading. A spokesperson for George Washington University said the university is aware of her article and is looking into this situation. What this ideology is showing is that people are getting more bold about aligning with their fantasies and identifying as something that they didn't grow up at. Even if that means changing the definition of what something actually means. And this is a theme that is very prevalent in today's society as these different movements continue to be pushed. Here's an example of somebody changing the definition of what something means. What does, what does being black mean to you? And why? why, why do you want to be black? Well, I think that, you know, sometimes how we feel is more powerful than how we're born. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, 
blackness can be defined as philosophical, cultural, okay. biological, you know, there's a lot of different that's things, right. a lot of different people. And I think you do have to kind of like walk the walk if that's how, who you are. Okay. So. so you feel that you walk the walk of a black woman? Absolutely. We all have human origins in the continent of Africa. I mean, that's true, right? The human populations originating in Africa is everybody. In conclusion, the world is crazy. But on a different note, if you made it to the end of the video, that means you liked the video. So go ahead and like the video, subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Thanks.